Welcome to Hacking Arcade ROMs, Lesson 5, Part 1, Creating a Free Play Hack. This lesson will actually be split into multiple lessons because there's a lot of things to do. But Lesson 1 will get you started on the necessary steps to creating a free play hack. Specifically, finding out how or where the credits are stored in RAM. So in this lesson, we're going to learn the beginnings of how to make a free play ROM hack. We're going to use Frogger for this example. And we have to really step back and think a little bit of what we're going to do. Because there's, there's a lot of components to making a free play hack. In this section, in this lesson, at least in this part of the lesson, we're just going to do a small part of the total requirements. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out where the RAM or where the credits are stored in RAM. We're going to figure out how to find that, number one. Then we're going to um, validate our findings. Um, and then we're going to figure out how that data gets set. And what we're going to do is, in this part, in this part of the lesson, we're just going to actually force the game to give us a whole lot of credits when we start. Um, because that's one way you can do a free play hack. You can, um, you can just add a bunch of credits when the game starts, and then you can alter the code that removes the credits or deducts credits every time you play a game. Um, and that's, that's one way you can do a free play hack. Um, or you could actually figure out the code that checks when you try to start a game um, whether there's quarters and override that. I think the way of just adding a bunch of credits and then removing the code that deducts credits is the easiest way to do a free play hack. Um, so we're going to do that. In this lesson, we're not going to show you how to deduct the credits or remove the deduction. We're just going to find where the credits are stored in RAM. Um, and then in part two of this lesson, which will be a separate lesson because this one will be a little bit long, I will show you how to alter the, the startup code so you automatically have a whole bunch of credits. And then maybe um, in part I, two or maybe a part three, I haven't decided yet, I will show you how to find the code that deducts credits and change it so your credits never get deducted. Obviously, though, there's other things besides that when adding a free play hack. You generally want to um, make some type of display that says free play and um, which actually you can do pretty easily now. You could have done that after lesson one. Um, and you may or may not want to add a attract screen because a lot of free play, uh, or a lot of games when they have credits in them, at least the older games, they will pause and they will only show a screen that doesn't change. And you often don't want that because you'll get screen burning on your monitors. A lot of the newer games though, when you have credits, it still you know plays the attract um, screen. So you don't have to even do that. So again, in this lesson, we're going to figure out how to find out where credits are stored. Um, there's a couple steps to that. Then we're going to um, validate that we have found where our credits are. And then in the second part of this lesson, we'll actually show you how to alter the, the code, find the code that actually initializes the credits to zero when the game begins and alter that so you have a whole bunch of credits. Anyway, let's begin. Now. As you can see, I already have Frogger running. Um, so what you're going to want to do is unzip the Frogger ROMs to your main directory. And in lessons one through all of them so far, I've shown you how to do that. At this point, you should know how to do that by now. So I'm not going to show you how to unzip things um, into MAME so that you can play them. Um, if you don't know how to do that, go back and watch the first couple lessons again because we covered that a couple times. So you can see I already have my Frogger running here. and um, what we need to do is we, we know the credits have to be stored in RAM. There's a couple components to a video game. There's generally RAM and there's ROM. All right, ROM is read-only memory. It's the game code. It cannot be changed. It's set in stone. Um, but credits are a dynamic thing. As you play the game, credits are added. As you put quarters in, as you play the game, the credits are removed. Um, so the player's credits cannot actually be stored in ROM. They have to be stored in RAM. 
So we need to do, what we need to do is find out what the RAM range is. Where could this RAM be? Because um, on a Z80 CPU, there is approximately 5,000 RAM loca or memory locations. Any of them could be RAM or ROM. Um, we showed you how to actually figure out the ROMs in the previous lessons. Now let's figure out how to determine where the RAM range is. Because once we know where the RAM range is, we can use some of those commands within the main debugger to search through the RAM and try to um, maybe highlight what might be the credits. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down now. I want a command prompt, right? So I'm gonna go to my E drive, I'm CD to MAME, and I'm gonna start up, um, rather than start up MAME and debugger, I'm gonna do MAME 64 Frogger list XML. Remember that one, which gives us information? And I'm gonna write that to frogger.xml. And then again, I'm gonna, like I did before in a previous episode, I'm gonna actually use the WordPad program to view this file. And I said that, you know, we used, we, we looked at MAME um, list XML before to find ROM regions. Well, I wanna find the MAME driver code because that's gonna give me a lot more information. Um, and that will help me find the RAM ranges, usually. So once I've pulled out this main XML list, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for the word source file, okay? And that's not it, I want to find next, there it is. Source file. And it says Galaxian.c, which is interesting because this is Frogger. Well, guess what, Fro Galaxian was the base of a lot of games. So a lot of the game's hardware is actually Galaxian hardware or, or minor variations of Galaxian hardware, and Frogger is one of those. So the main source file, Galaxian.c, or it's actually a newer version of main, it's actually Galaxian.cpp. Um, well, I'm gonna find this on the internet, and this will help me find more information about ROM. So remember, write down Galaxian.c, remember that. We're gonna search for that. Um, in, um, on the internet to see what we can find. So close that down. Don't need to save it. Let's pull up a web browser. So I'm pull up my web browser here and I'm gonna go to www.mamedev.org. Hit return. And I'm gonna click on this thing over here that says fork me on GitHub. Here it is. Okay, I'm gonna go to the directory that says source. I'm gonna go to the directory that says MAME. I'm gonna go to the directory that says drivers. And it says, sorry, we had to truncate this directory to a thousand files, whatever. I'm gonna go up to my um, URL bar here. I'm just gonna scroll over and I'm just gonna add slash and the name Galaxian and cpp, I know the driver listing said c because all the main files used to be something dot c in some recent, very, very recent version, like newer than the main file that I'm, main that I'm running. Um, the drive, the, the files changed to the cpp extension. So um, if you're Googling real time, you're gonna have to put galaxian.cpp. You can actually sometimes find it um, just Googling galaxian.c um, on the internet and, main, and the word MAME and you might find it, but it's just easier to go to the, the current source. So I'm hit return. And it's waiting, there it goes. And here we go, we have a whole bunch. And if you, these, these, these driver files are incredibly useful. They tell you all kinds of information about the games and how they're supported in hardware. And oh, it just, it's a treasure trove of information. It really is. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna just search for Galaxian, I'm sorry, not Galaxian, Frogger, because that's a game I want. And I'm just gonna click around until I find what I'm looking for. We're gonna look for, we, we wanna find something that says the word Frogger somewhere up here, and then um, it's gonna say something like AM range, AM RAM, okay? So I'm just gonna click around until I see something that looks like that. And here it is. It says map derived from schematics. This is the address map. Okay, and maybe you could have searched for the word address map start. And I wanna look for that thing that says AM range and then AM RAM because this is 
the range that is my RAM. So here it says it's range hex 8000 through hex 87FF. So I now know my RAM range is 8000, 8000, yep, through 87FF. All right? So you can write that down. You definitely want to write that down because we're going to need that. So I know, I now know all the RAM, at least the, there's other types of RAM. There's video RAM, but we're, we're not concerned with that because they're not storing data about credits or, or um, things like that in video RAM. Um, you can see down here you have, um, um, it says Galaxian video RAM, things like that. Um, you, we're just looking for the one that says AM RAM. Okay. All right, so I have 8000 through 87FF. I'm gonna write that down, close my window, and let's go back to um, the MAME debugger. Let's go to the command prompt, E colon, CD MAME, MAME 64 Frogger dot deb or slash minus debug. Okay, everything's up and running. I'll just go ahead and start out the debugger here, or start out the main program, main program running. Okay. Now, all right, so we know we have the range of zero, or I'm sorry, eight zero 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 through eight seven FF. Okay, and we can even bring up a memory window here if we'd like, and we can go to zero eight uh, eight zero zero zero, and I don't think we can make it so big that we can see all the way down to 8FFF, it's gonna to be too big. But we can see there's some stuff going on here. Um, and we need to determine where in this area the credits are stored. Okay, so right now we have zero credits. Well, how could we find that? Um, we know the range 8000 through 8 Seven FF is actually zero X eight zero zero number of addresses, um, and if you do our math, eight zero X eight zero zero. Let's just bring up a calculator and do that math. Go to programmer, and um, so we can do this eight seven. Oops, I'm sorry, we gotta go to hex. Oh, we're in hex. Nope, we're not. Let's get rid of that. We'll go to click on hex 87FF minus 8000 is 7FF. You have to actually add one to that. So that's that many addresses. And if we look at that in decimal, that's over 2,000 addresses. So where in these 2,000 addresses? our credits being stored. Well, we can poke around and, and, and do some experimenting. I'm gonna close down the new memory window. We know we can affect the value of the credits by putting in quarters. So if you're not familiar with the MAME, just click in the MAME window once the game's running and hit five. And I just put in four credits. So we know the number four should probably be in RAM somewhere. Okay, so why don't we look for it? Remember we can use that find command to find a certain value in a memory range. And if you don't remember the find command, you can type help find, but it's find where you wanna start looking from. So zero, the address you wanna start looking from, so zero X eight zero zero zero, um, comma, how many addresses you wanna search through. And we wanna address, um, we want to go through 7FF plus one, which is actually 800. And then we want to look for what? We want to look for the number four. So I'm gonna just bring this down a little bit. Okay, hit return. Okay, so here's a bunch of addresses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 10 addresses in that range, in RAM range, that hold the value four. Well, we could poke around each one and, and, and go into the, the um, into the memory window and start changing the values to see if our credits appear, and that would work. But 
we can, we can do a little more um, intelligent reasoning and um, narrow it down some more. So we know that we can affect the value. And we have affected the value to the four. How about we do it again? Let's add one more coin. Now you have the value is five. And let's r just run that same command again. But rather than looking for four, let's look for five. Now, if I do this, there will be a couple values that, that have five in there, probably. But there should only be one value that is common between both runs, right? Because only theoretically, I mean, it may be luck that two other val you know, some other uh, memory addresses happen to change to five too, but it's probably not very likely. Um, so I'll run this and look at I have three addresses, no, four addresses. Um, all I have to do is find out which of these addresses is common between both of them. So we have eight three six d six. Is that in here? No. Eight three e one. Is that in there? Eight three e one. Oh yeah, that's in there. Well, that's probably it. Let's just verify that there's no other ones that are in there. 83F3, 83F3, that's definitely not in there. And 83FB, that's not in there. So 83E1, that seems to be the winner. It's in common in both of them. I bet if I did it, added some more credits and uh, did another check, we would find that um, appears again. But at this point, I'm pretty confident that that's my value. So I'm gonna open up a memory window. And I'm just gonna go to that value, eight, three, E, one. It's got the number five here, see it there? Let's just change that, let's change it to seven. Look at that, boom, credits are seven. So we found the value that holds the credits in RAM. Um, so we're almost on the way to where we almost have a free play hack. Now all we have to do is alter the game code when the game starts up and once it's done because when when a, a video game starts it usually initializes its memory to zero because um, ram is weird that way when you turn a c computer on the ram can be in any there can be any values stored in ram so a game usually clears out once it starts it clears out all its ram to zero um, so you don't like for example um, magically get credits so we have to just find out where the ram after it's initialized and then actually just write the, the, a large number um, into that space and give ourselves some credits. Um, and that's part, that, that it is one part of multiple parts to do a free ROM, free play um, hack. So we'll, we'll talk about that step, um, finding that startup code and altering it in the next lesson.